It's the end of the road for this venerable old Samsung TV from 2008. The Wacky World of Multimedia J. Well then, I guess I'm going to have to figure out what to do about my stream graphics. <laughs> That's right, folks. It's the end of an era here at Jay's Geek House. The venerable 2008 Samsung TV is finally getting retired. What is possibly my single biggest example ever of the silent aging of technology. So much has happened in the years that I've had this TV. So much. It's one of those things where you're like, this thing can't be that old, can it? And you think about it and you're like, yeah, it is. Junk mail and desk clutter aside, and creaky chair stuff aside, this is a Samsung TV from back in the days when TVs still had bezels. When TVs were basically getting to the point where they doubled as computer monitors. Not every brand was able to double very well as a computer monitor, but I definitely found a way to make it work. And as you can obviously tell from the snow raster on here and weak or no signal, this TV had an analog tuner. It goes back to, actually it goes back to before analog TV shut down in 2008. Probably had some backward compatibility there before analog was shut off. Yeah, we're going way, way back. No smart TV, no computer stuff, no apps, no Android TV or anything of that sort. And certainly not a, no touch screens or anything. Not even LED technology or modern backlighting. This thing still has a cold cathode and it's a power sucker. If I crank the backlight all the way, it's 200 watts. Putting it all the way down to zero like this, then just having it running in a dark mode, in a dark room, Geek House dark mode aside, it gets down to 100 watts. This thing is the flat panel TV version of an incandescent light bulb. One last round of Rollivision from this TV for the road. We talk about the silent aging of technology and what has happened since I've had this thing. Yeah, uh, ha, 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 ha. Let's see, since I've had, went back when I first got this TV, number one, World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King was a new product. I was still using a landline SBC phone with landline phone service, analog Klipsch Pro Media 5.1, so still using computer speakers instead of my Onkyo box and custom setup nowadays, a Microsoft Digital Media Keyboard from back when silver two-tone, silver and black was still a popular computer color, Windows XP only had one Wii sensor bar because I didn't have the Wii U yet, Cyber Buddy was still a thing because it was still on XP, there were tube TVs back then that I talked about and George W. Bush was still president, and of course the old apartment. But yeah, so much stuff has changed since 2008. Oh, I should probably also throw in that smartphones were something really, really new because, and the original iPhone was the form factor for iPhones back then. So, <laughs> what more needs to be said? Now let's check out the YouTube clip of the, uh, probably what is the oldest tech video on this channel, circa 2008, from when I first got this TV, just to see how much YouTube has changed. Oh, excuse me with all these fuzzy details from years and years ago. It was January 1st, 2009, because I got the TV at the very end of 2008. Anyways, welcome back to smudgy, standard def YouTube of the 2000s. This is a 37-inch Samsung LN something something something, can't remember the model number, FF Class 37-inch 1080p TV. In other words, my new computer monitor. whoop de freaking do uh, Yeah, I know. Overkill, right? Nerd toy, right? Well, actually, what this represents is one of the goals I had for 2008 was to combine my uh, my PC and console gaming you know, together better. And one of the ways I figured I could do that is by routing them all through a display so I could split my uh, console and PC gaming more, down, more evenly down the middle. 
And of course, it was no fun having a nice high-resolution display for the computer games and then going to a standard tube TV for anything done on a console, especially with something like the Wii or the later games in the PS2 that support higher resolutions, progressive scan, and all that other stuff. Not to mention all the newer consoles that support various levels of HD. So, in any event, this is my new display. It's got all the sources and everything. Everything's routed through it. This is a 37-inch... Oh, these things loop, that's right. Ah, look at the little landline phone down there, and yeah, one thing that hasn't changed is my desk was a little, always been a little messy, whether then or now. But yep, here we go. And this was something bizarre back then. It took a while for people to kind of warm up to the idea of using TVs as computer monitors. It's way more mainstream nowadays. But we're going back to the 2000s here when people were still just getting used to widescreen. Never mind widescreen, high def, 1080p. Hey, speaking of what things were like back in those days, uh, I, I used up a tax refund to get this TV. 800 something in late 2000s dollars. 800 something dollars in the late 2000s blew a tax return to get 1080p. Could have gotten 720p at a decent price, but I wanted to future proof this sucker. And all these years later, I'd say it was successful. Hey, while we're at it, just for old time's sake, let's play the clip with the same framing we did back in 2009. This is the worn out, soon to be retired FF class back then anyways, Samsung 1080p 37 inch TV from back when TVs still had bezels. Enough said. <laughs> so what happened to this thing? Well, what happened was there's probably a power supply problem after all these years. It, it shows, nowadays it shows signs of capacitor problems when you first start it up because what happens is first you get like it power cycling on and off with no picture then you get like acid trip colors going everywhere everything's all screwed up uh 1960s psychedelic picture that you can't do anything with and then after it power cycles about 20 times then you finally get a stable picture and if it has to warm up a little more it might flicker a little but in other words it's having power problems just like the silver bullet did when it died of capacitor plague it got like an old carburetor car so basically what you had to do is wait for it to warm up if you don't want it to keep stalling on you. So when it gets that bad, it's time to say goodbye. All right, one more time for the road. Let's hear those start up and shut down chimes on this thing that I had to shut off when it started having power problems because when it's power cycling all by itself, it'll screech all over the place. But it's warmed up, so it should be fine. TV, blink. Good, still works. I hope. Raster! Woohoo! Now let's shut it off. <sighs> I totally could repair this thing and recap the power supply, but with how power inefficient this piece of junk is, it's totally not worth it. So, yeah, as you can tell with the extreme angle from this in the title screen, uh, I found out the hard way that there is absolutely no way a TV is going to fit in the project area as I currently have it set up. So, what I'm going to do with the old one? I don't know. I can't even fit it in here to fix it if it's this size. <laughs> it probably won't even fit properly on the table. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out a plan B for that if I want to try fixing it or maybe I should just recycle it all together. But yeah, full HD TV, not 4K, uh, about, what is it, 40 inch? Yeah, 40 inch with a smaller bezel. So it's probably, it's dimensions wise, I at least measured that with the measuring tape. It's roughly the same width as the TV it's replacing. So it'll fit as is in my setup, even without using special mounts or moving speakers around. So I want to go 1080p one last time because my systems don't quite have the horsepower to do 4K 60 yet. So. Worst comes to worst, I'll have some two big screens in a couple of years, and the top one will be 1080 or something. <laughs> oh man, the possibilities. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We gotta find a way to unbox this darn thing, because it's obviously not gonna fit over here. Geek House light mode. Well, I'd say this is a perfect excuse to make the bed. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. Get this thing open, and let's see. It looks like everything is uh, good to go, but let's uh, pull this out here. All right, so we have a setup guide. 
We gotta think we're done with the knife. Set up, guys. Can we pull this out with just one hand? No, we can't. We're gonna have to actually lift the box up and uh, let it all slide out. A little bright in here, don't you think? Let's get this thing out of the box. <laughs> all right, now that I have both hands, let's do this. Ugh, watch out, there's a, there's a laptop under there. See if we can uh, get the flaps set up. We're gonna do this whole thing in one big long take. And the flaps up and stuff like that, and all right. See how well this old see how well this old trick still works. Oh, it even says do not open here. Open the opposite side. Uh, I think we need flat number four. Oh, it's not even up. Hold on. On its side. On its side. We already got something coming out. Part of the stand is out. <laughs> what are you in a? What are you in a maternity ward helping someone give birth to a baby? <laughs> yeah. Now it'll slide. Oh. <laughs> Did I remember to shave my armpits today? All right, box is off. Grab the thing so it doesn't tip over. Ugh, static electricity from the styrofoam. Well, that's a convenient place to stash the box for now. But let's lie the panel down flat and take off the last piece of styrofoam and try not to get zapped again. Ooh, what's this? Remote control from remote control or something like that. Pull that aside. Any warranties? Oh, everything is in that little box over there. All right, there's the panel. All right, we gotta find where the, there's, and here's the other foot that goes on it. Good. Throw that up, toss these aside, keep them together. Panel. Let's see if anybody played kickball with this thing in the warehouse. Or if some idiot picking it let it fall over. The more likely option. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Nice big mirror thingy too. All right. Oh, the, you know what? Let's put. Let's see if we can get power to it and switch it on while it's lying flat like this. Don't want it to overheat or anything. But there's the panel. We just got to finish putting it together. Retrieved the box from where it conveniently stashed itself when it fell behind the bed because we'll need it for a hard surface later. And one of the advantages of checking one of these things out on a nice fluffy surface like this so you don't scratch the screen. Let's look at what it has for inputs. It has some old-fashioned inputs there for the retro console, so one last time we can hook the retro consoles up without upscaling them into HDMI boxes. LAN obviously for internet updates and stuff. Digital audio out will be good for an audio feedback line going to the home theater box if I want to just have smart TV apps only. And uh, that way we'll just have the other thing do audio without wasting an HDMI on it. That's one of the things I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm not going to have a connection from the AV receiver into the TV. I'm probably just going to run my consoles through the Elgato box and the second HDMI in. There's two HDMIs. One of them is going to come from the main computer. The second one is going to come from the Elgato box. And what everything else will go into the Elgato box. I might switch it from time to time or get an HDMI switch to switch in things like if I want to watch a Blu-ray on the PlayStation 3 or something. But by and large, and of course we have VESA holes for when we put it on a custom mount later. For now though, we're just gonna put the default feet on it, which by the way, that was not the remote control. Those are handy covers for the little feet that slide in there. So here's the plan. We see how well it works, literally right out of the box, by uh, using the box as a surface to put the default feet on this, stand it up, Put some power to it through this handy dandy extension cord thingy. Speaking of which, what happened to power cords for these things? They're like custom made for wall mounting and stuff. Power is a round round, takes AC directly so it has an internal power supply. All right, let's put the feed on this thing and let's see how it all runs right out of the box. Blue screws? What? What's the deal with blue screws? Are these like demilitarized screws or something? I don't know. Epic fear. All right, lights are down and this thing is chilling up against its box. The power button's lit down there. So let's see what it does. Push the button, see the reflection of the boob light. Smart TV by Samsung. <laughs> All right, please replace that reflection of the boob light. What the? It looks like Windows 10 starting up. <laughs> It's got music too. Oh, isn't that nice? 
feels like you know how in like Doctor Claw and Inspector Gadget was always like da 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 to his screen. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Let's get some. Let's get the plastic off of this thing. Get the plastic off of this thing and let's take a good long look at Energy Guide. Eight dollars. <laughs> let's get the plastic off of this thing. This reminds me of an all-in-one PC, except uh, it's a smart TV. Let me guess, it's going to bother the heck out of me in order to hook it up to the internet? It is! It, it, it looks just like starting up Windows 10. <laughs> so, ugh, shipping pla- oh, some of the shipping plastic will not come off with one hand. Whatever. Anyong haseo, or something like that. I don't know. The TV panel is actually manufactured in Mexico, so is this even Hangul on these batteries? Yeah, uh, we got the remote going anyways, so let's uh, cut down on a glare here and let's set this thing up. Smaller and more packed remote than its predecessor. It even has a Netflix button. <laughs> Finally, something I can be a lazy ass with and do with only one hand. Uh, no, please no Espanol. Uh, Alright, English? Da -da, da -da. Download and run the latest SmartThings app on your mobile, then start Samsung TV <laughs> is there a skip button for this? Really? I gotta download an app of all things? Hello and welcome. Oh, now it's talking. Please download the Smart Things app on your mobile to start TV setup. Oh boy. I can imagine what my dad would say. You may press the right button to set up the TV with the TV remote. The accessibility oh. function is available <laughs> when you press and hold the mute button. I can just imagine my dad trying to set this thing up. He'd be like, I just want to plug in the cable and watch something. <sighs> TVs these days. And this isn't even a new one. It's technically new old stock from 2019. Because Samsung went to all 4K after this and I wanted 1080 one last time. Whatever. Press right to set up the TV with your remote. Right! Oh, really? I just want to get to where I have like a something on the screen where I can access apps or something. Uh, let's see. We can put it in retail mode, which will probably jack the brightness really high. I just want to get it to where it's re waiting for a signal, and then we'll go get the kilowatt to see how much things have improved since the incandescent bulb era of HD TVs. <laughs> this is a. I think the newer, the 4K panels nowadays are smaller than this thing, but. Hey, you know, if I go to 4K in a couple of years, this will make for a great secondary panel. I'm just going to need, like, if you ever seen Wendell's setup from Level 1 Techs, I would need a setup like his to have panels this big. <laughs> It'd be a project to put all those on, on the desk. But anyways. Are you sure you don't want to connect any devices? The TV will automatically set up the devices you connect. I don't care. Just get me to where it says no signal. Hey, you want to put it on wireless? Not yet, you piece of crap! And I certainly don't want to enter my super long and secure wireless password with a remote. That's going to take like an hour, and I want this TV where it's going to be <laughs> before I do that. Please, let me skip it and just get me to where it says no signal. I'm talking like my dad now. Oh, look at this. Select your TV source. Is it from cable or satellite or antenna? Uh, I don't have any broadcast stuff. I can probably change it later. Please, just get me... Oh, finally. TV is ready to use. We highly recommend that you perform the following actions to use the smart TV features. Connect to the network, agree to terms and conditions, and probably sit there for an hour downloading a couple of years of firmware. <laughs> hey, you know, this thing looked like Windows 10 when I started it up. Who knows? I'll bet any money it runs like Windows 10 as well. <laughs> I might just never hook it up to the internet. Who cares? Uh, done. Left. Great, now how do I get down to click on that stupid thing? Hi, Boob Light. <laughs> okay, we, we have a picture now. Ambient light detection is on. Your TV brightness will adjust automatically. Oh, really? Let's see if it dims when I shut this off. The camera won't be able to see it, though. <laughs> oh, finally, it says no signal. Put the big lights back on. Is it going to jack the brightness now? Okay, maybe it only does it when there's actually signal going through it. But yeah, finally, no signal. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Can I shut it off now without it complaining at me? Uh, a little dark without the lights. Oh, <laughs> what's this fancy crap? 
And what happens when you turn it back on? <laughs> okay, now I got a, now I got some questions. Is this thing like going into sleep mode when I turn it off instead of turning off for real? Get the kilowatt over here. We are now in the unenviable position of looking at a boob light reflection with uh, having to do the kilowatt thing this way and try and keep it from going to low light mode. Wow, like seven to eight watts standby power draw. There's gotta be, there's gotta be like a power save setting we can put in there to get this to work. Cause I think, I don't know, if, I forgot what the other one did. I think it might have had some standby power draw as well. But the big difference is gonna be when we fire it up. So let's turn this thing back on. And we are up to 50 watts ish, around the 51 watt mark. So already an improvement, and this is with a decent amount of brightness to the screen. Let's uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see how do we get into the menus on this thing? I probably should actually learn what's what on this. No signal. Okay, TV, live TV cable, remote access, and connection guide. Source. Duh, 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 duh. I think I have to hit up on that. <laughs> TV. Um, how do we get into the? <laughs> Guess who's never used these before? Well, not this specific model anyways. The home menu, does that do something? I guess the terms and sta da 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 TV, da, 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 TV guide, channel list, schedule, something. Uh, how about that hamburger menu in the corner? Oh, there's a gear for settings. Perfect. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Something I'm more used to seeing. All right, so what do we have in these menus? We have picture, standard, Broadcast mode, sound, output through the speaker, what kind of standard it is. Broadcasting, interesting. Uh, that probably sends it to a mobile device or something like that. General general network system manager, eco solution, what does that do? I don't need to be charging, yeah, because I don't need to, yeah, power save mode, let's turn that on. Uh, let's see, motion lighting and auto power off, so let's turn that on. Auto power for turning off a no user interaction is detected. So that'll probably work on you. That's what, what the problem was last time. With the last TV, you could only get automatic powering down of the display when you were using the D sub port. Yeah, <laughs> the VGA port or whatever you want to call it. The blue plug with the pins on it. It wouldn't work with HDMI. <laughs> I'll be very glad to say goodbye to those days. All right, so with the power save mode turned on, what are we down to? Now we're down to 25 watts. So is we could also set minimum brightness to brighten things up. But uh, let's see, uh, don't auto power off the thing. All right, let's set the minimum brightness on this thing to get the range. So it's, that's with zero. So all the way down, it's 25 watts. And if we jack the brightness all the way up to max, 50. I don't see much of a difference. Looks like it's locked in because of that. I, I think we're gonna have to, can I manually adjust the brightness to test that out? Uh, let's turn off all the eco. Well, I'll leave that on anyways. What's motion lighting? Reduce power consumption with a motion sensitive brightness control. Uh, how do we turn that off? Or something. All that plastic that I took off earlier is cackling or something. Turn off the ambient light detection. Turn off all the power save stuff. Okay, here's what it is jacked all the way up. Can we set that? Let's go find the brightness menu in here and see what the range is manually. I found it! So with the brightness jacked all the way up, it's at 50 watts instead of 200 watts. That is definitely an improvement since 2008. And let's manually put it all the way down. So it's zero brightness, which, uh, can I even, does that even look right if we don't have any light in the room? That's like turn all the lights off and stuff, right? Oh yeah, that's still dim even with the lights all the way off. Interesting. So if we cut the brightness all the way down, it goes down to 13 watts. <laughs> For a 40 inch panel, that's actually pretty respectable. All right, let's put all the green features back on then to control uh, the, to finally control the electricity bill. This is Connecticut after all, so. <laughs> Sorry, Eversource. Uh, general, eco, da, 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 da. Turn that back on. Light detection, minimum brightness. Come on, you piece of junk. Piece of junk, I just got it. Turn that all the way down. So we're just gonna have to swap the power cord in order to get this working. Power save on, motion lighting on. Let's do auto power off after like four hours. If, do like auto power off after four hours. 
I usually turn this off. This thing should shut off when it has no, no signal anyways. Accessibility, da da da, smart features. How come it's still dark like that? Let's put it up in dynamic mode or something. Standard picture mode, put it into dynamic. There we go. Oh no, it's because I turned the brightness all the way down. Uh, going through menus on a TV. All right, I wish there was a way I could just reset to default. Let's put some brightness back in this thing. Let's do like this. Brightness, contrast, sharp, apply picture settings to all sources. Make them all the same. Digital noise reduction, I'll probably turn that off. Contrast enhancer, film mode. Is it, Where's the game mode on this thing so I can cut down on the... That's something I noticed when playing a Mario Kart earlier is that I actually do a little better when it's not taking too long to draw the screen because it's a faster game. So I gotta see what we have here. Standard, it used to be entertainment mode for the other one. Natural, movie, dynamic is the brightest and the prettiest. Yeah, and so if I get really close to it, then yeah, I'll put in. We'll keep it in standard for now. We'll play with it once we set it up. But under general, what support do? Software update. Open an ele open e manual. What? When all else fails, read the directions. Works. Is that loaded into the firmware on this thing? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> for the what? For for the when all else fails, read the directions crowd. I was wondering when that would happen. It's basically a computer, anyways. So how do I get out of here? Uh, do you want to exit? And then hit exit. <laughs> Search, source, settings, da da da. So, yeah, smart TV, not that all that bad. I just worry about hackable TVs and stuff. I don't want someone to, like, malware my TV and break it or something. Someone, like, attack this over the internet or something like that. And nice that I can put it on wireless. I'll probably just do that. Punching in the password with a remote is going to take forever, though. So, we will definitely do that <laughs> with outside of this YouTube video thingy. So. System manager, and that's the other stuff. You can give it a device name as well. Change a pin, auto protection, da 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 da. Not bad. All right, well, time to do the dirty work. We've already checked out the uh, the range, so it looks like most of the time when I'm using it, it'll be like 20 to 50 watts, which is a massive improvement over the 100 watts minimum of the last one. My question is though, if I I can just turn it off like that, and it goes down to like seven, eight watts standby power. If I hold down the power off button, will it like hard, will it like do a hard off after like 10 seconds or so? Oh, it's rebooting. And now what's it doing? Well, it's at 14 watts right now. Three, three, what the heck is that? Oh, it, it's, it went. Okay, enough playing with this thing. We'll have to actually read the manual on this because I've never had to deal with smart TVs before. But I will miss my analog raster fuzz. All right, enough fiddling around here. Time to do the dirty work. <laughs> so here's the plan. We're going to set up the new TV where uh, the Samsung, the current Samsung is. We're going to put it on the default stands for now just to try it out, play some ESO, do some other things, observe the video quality and how well it works as a PC monitor, and get more used to all of its bells and whistles. And then we'll start playing with the fancy hardware like that clamp mount that I got for it. For the time being, though, I'm not going to have true surround sound because I'm getting rid of the shelf. So I will be putting... Uh, <laughs> going out of focus there. I'm going to put the center channel on the floor or something until I figure it all out. Ultimately, I want the center channel speaker to be on the desk or lower or something like that. I don't think the, the TV shelf is going to work very well with this new TV because it's a little smaller. And it's definitely lighter. If I got the 4K Samsung panel, it would definitely be too small, light, and flimsy to have a shelf on top of it. <laughs> All right, time to start moving things. Fortunately, we have a second monitor, so we can have something playing on it. I, I think we should try hot swapping this while the computer's running, and then just plug in the power and the HDMI and fire it up. Uh. <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> I knew it. I knew when I saw these stupid little two-leg stand thingies in the stores that it would be just total crap and you'd want to replace them with <laughs> a third-party mount. This TV is actually much lower than the last one. Not just because of the much, 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 much thinner bezels, and then the newer TVs would be have even less screen real or space along the edge. Not only that, 
But also uh, the stand, the default stand that comes with it doesn't go up as high. So <laughs> I might not, I, I might be I might not be able to sit up and look at this thing. Yeah, uh, this is why I want to bolt it to the back of the desk with a clamp mount. But even if I kept it at this height, I just buy a second one, put it over the top, and have two screens that way. <laughs> oh man, boy, would that be fun! You know, put movies up to the second screen, and then play games on the first screen, and then like have stream stuff over here for a third screen. Like. So many possibilities, but this is just the default stand for it. Obviously, I'm not going to keep this, and we'll, I, I'm just glad that the clamp that I bought has an adjustable height for when we give this thing a proper desk mount. It is way lighter than its predecessor, though. Way lighter. I forgot that TVs back then were built like tanks. Super heavy and everything. This is much lighter. From what I understand, it's modern 2021 4K successor. 2022 models probably coming out soon. Uh, its modern successor in 4K is even lighter. So, I don't know. I don't think I want to keep using the shelf and having that big center channel on top of the TV. I think I'm just going to go without a center channel for a bit and then uh, re re uh, readjust everything whenever I get the clamp working. Because one of the things I want to do is put this up in the air so I can put the center channel underneath. <laughs> do it that way. Uh, we'll figure it out. I am a moron for not getting into smart TVs earlier. So one of the things in the YouTube 2022 thing that they just posted on their blog was basically talking about how they're going to try and push into smart TVs a lot more because of stuff like this. So the drop, one of the drives at YouTube this year is to actually push, make a push into smart TVs and to try and grow the audience that are watching through smart TVs to kind of round out where there's already people watching through computers and there's people watching through phones, but increasing smart TV traffic is one of the things that they want to, that they want to work on. And this is why there are apps and stuff that are friend, very friendly to watching on TV. YouTube does 1080 and even 4K why wouldn't they do something like this? I mean, then let's watch the trailer. Check this out. It's 1080 TV, but imagine if I did stuff in 4K. So you probably have already seen this, of course. This is the opener to my gaming streams. I'll tell you, this stuff inspires you to be more of a YouTuber and less of a streamer. By the way, I went looking for a Twitch app and couldn't find it. I don't think there is one for this TV. This is crazy, man. Can I fast forward? Yeah, you can skip ahead a little. Imagine if I was putting this through my sound system. Put this forward a little more. It's time to play, play some, some stuff. stuff. So if something ends on this app, and you get, check it out. You get movies you can go to, or it just goes in, in this case, it's going forward to a stream. Why I'm not a Twitch streamer. That's crazy. So yeah, I'm going to put more of an emphasis on making stuff look more TV friendly. I mean, once upon a time, I went from being inspired by television to being inspired by web video. But web video is way too little, way too narrow of a focus these days. No, 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 no. This is what I need to make this channel look good for. I need a longer HDMI cable so I can hook this back up to the AV receiver, use the audio return channel, to send over, or something like that, to send audio over to the AV receiver, get some sound on this thing. Because, yikes. What am I, what was I thinking by not getting into smart TVs earlier and finding this entire scene of stuff that can be streamed straight to your TV? Well, somebody had, something had to compete with Roku. YouTube's algorithms working on a smart TV if you show interest in my videos. Look at this. 
there's some streams mixing in with the movies and other stuff. And the importance of thumbnails as cover art. Because, look, you may wonder about thumbnails and stuff, but the reason why thumbnails are cover art is because you could have a movie right next to one of your videos. So it's cover art. Hey, I want to watch this. It's not just about clicks and computers anymore. Can I load that? Skip ahead a little. This also means on my gaming streams, I gotta stop being on camera at the beginning of these things and get straight into the game because it's what it's what either, people are to get that looking done, for to do to make that happen. Either because <laughs> I have hype mode no matter what. Wait, what's this? Oh no 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 no! Get back! No 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 no! Play that! Play that! Play that! <laughs> Accomplish a big thing in game. We make some noise. That's the way it is. Woo! And this one actually has crowd noise keeps playing after the main thing is done. That's right. We down the boss. We solo the dungeon. Bada bing, bada bang. I totally have to make everything I do on this channel more TV friendly. Nice. Look at that. My receiver is from 2010. That's how long I've been running at Ankyo with no problems whatsoever. Just some glitches here and there. And it supports audio return channel on the HDMIs. Good. So here's the plan. We get an extra long HDMI cable. We hook it up to this TV. And we use audio return to send everything to the receiver when we're watching apps or smart stuff or whatever it is on this thing. Nice. And there we go. It's like college all over again. When I'd set up in a new dorm room and I would get the computer set up and I'd be like, I'll set the rest of it up sometime soon. And that never happened because I'd fire up the computer and it would be all over. The new toy effect would take over. and I'd be playing video games and bouncing around on the college broadband. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, I'll get this all set up. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, no. I couldn't resist the new toy, and I wound up spending the rest of the evening watching the, watching the stuff on the smart TV and playing with the new features. Some things never change, but this TV is a little too low, so I think I should look at the clamp tomorrow. And just like that, that 4 a.m. is now 4 p.m. and it's Saturday evening. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this Wan show ranting about Newegg's latest issues, or should I say listen to it as background noise while working on the other stuff. But for now, let's pick up where we left off with this TV thing. We're definitely gonna need chapters for this video. <laughs> Okay, you're ready to see just how bad this thing got? I cleaned it up as best I could, but the base was rusting from when I would clean on the bottom of the base without actually lifting the TV up because it was so freaking heavy. But at least it was a dumb TV, not waiting to be turned on via voice commands and stuff. So no standby power draw. But let's see, if you want to see how bad this thing got, let's grab the remote and turn it on. Okay, it's blinking. Ready? This will probably screech a couple of times because <laughs> I forgot to turn the TV speaker back off. And nothing. Okay, we've made some progress. Now it's actually power cycling the screen. <laughs> you just hang around and talk long enough, you'll see it turn off again. But this is what it does. It's probably a capacitor problem with the power supplies. I've seen a few teardowns of these TVs. There's usually a dried up or a bulged capacitor that causes these kinds of issues. So this thing will probably sit here for like 10 minutes or so before it'll actually say no signal on it. So you have this, then you have a scrambled picture, and then finally, when it's been running long enough, it'll actually work. Classic signs of capacitor problems in the power supply. And we have a uh, green screen where the raster should be <laughs> making progress. If the TV speaker is on, it would probably be screeching right now. It could also be the inverter board too. It's just a, it's a matter of waiting for something in this thing to get warmed up. I still think capacitors would be a good culprit first though. This thing was made in 2008. There, see, now we finally have a picture. Yeah, so this thing was made in 2008. Capacitor plague was early 2000s. Who knows? Maybe the manufacturing plant down in Mexico or something had enough capacitors sitting around to still be vulnerable. Who knows? Regardless, though, capacitors do eventually dry up. So they have they have dielectric stuff in them. So probably worth tearing this thing down and taking a look at it. 
But now that we have some raster on the screen and the screen's actually doing something, we can be very soberingly reminded as to why it's not worth it to fix this TV. Even if, even though it's probably a very easy fix and swap a few components, 92 watts with the backlight all the way down. And if we, let's hit the thing and turn the backlight all the way up to 10, like we were in a retail store or like when I was streaming, 10. Okay, this is what backlight 10, as bright as it's gonna go, almost 200 watts. Like I said, it's the incandescent light bulb of TVs. <laughs> the sad part is it works though, and it still works pretty darn good. So once it warms up, so part of me doesn't even want to get rid of this thing. I want to wait until it actually dies dies, as in no more picture, no matter what I do. We'll definitely have to do a teardown of this and see what went wrong and see if we can solder some new stuff in. Just gotta find a place to store it. <laughs> when I'm waiting for stuff to come in. Unless I want to keep taking the back panel off and putting it back on. It might also be good to get rid of that stand too and maybe see if I can integrate this into my setup if I can fix it and have two huge screens. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Panels these days. Okay, so how does one of these things go together? So this is a bolt stand for a TV up to 66 pounds. This would probably actually hold the old TV, never mind the new one. Some VESA mounts on it. It looks like it can uh, move a little too once it's mounted. And a little bit of cable management built in as well. All right, this is an Amazon recommended whatever it is, but let's put this thing together. And we'll of course listen to that WAN show about all the new egg nonsense while we do so. Just goes to show that when you do the right stuff with your streams on YouTube, people do listen to or watch them after the fact if you actually put on a show instead of an unorganized whatever you want to call it. Be the worst in everyone. Oh, this is an interesting setup. You have a little pole that clamps to the desk. You put some bolts through it, and then you hang the back bracket of this one off, and then uh, you have to use spacers and stuff to make sure it's good and secure. I'm at the point where I can lift the whole thing with that, but I don't want to torque my back, so I'm not going to be a show off. I'm going to leave the default feet on here, so if I have to adjust this, I can just put it on the floor standing up. It won't take up that much more space, it'll just look a little stupid. Plus, the feet on this thing are kind of snap-on, so I got a little thing that'll probably break if I try to remove them anyways, but uh, it'll look stupid, but if I want to take this off and clean or take this off and adjust the height or something, I can just have it standing up on the floor. <laughs> and it'll give uh, people something to laugh about on the internet and be like, hey, look at this guy. I don't know. Not everything is for content, but having some options and flexibility and going with practicality over looks is something I tend to do. Now, I could do a how-to on how to put one of these things together, but I don't really think I should. The most important thing is to always read the directions every single time, because you're talking about what's essentially mechanical construction here. Uh, I've seen a couple of how-tos on YouTube telling how to put these together, and every single one of them has had different variations on what is essentially the same mounting setup. So, you want to make sure you follow the manufacturer's recommendations, especially if there's a chance that the whole thing could fall over and you might have to invoke some kind of warranty or whatever it is. But the bottom line is, there's nothing all that really all that complicated or proprietary to any of these. It's all just mechanical stuff. So, because there's this kind of liberty of everybody doing their own thing, everybody pretty much does. <laughs> So uh, I don't really see much for industry standards when it comes to these mount stands for either TVs or monitors. So yeah, um, right. <laughs> Always follow the manufacturer instructions because the odds are, even if you do a bunch of these, they're probably all going to be different unless you're literally buying the exact same one every single time. It is that varied. <laughs> I think this is a little too high. <laughs> it's perfectly fine if I lay all the way back in the chair, but if I'm trying to sit up and do something, I have to be—I have to constantly look up. So uh, let's uh, let's lower this down a little. <laughs> Plenty of room for the center channel now. <laughs> By the way, twitchtv streezy. Yeah, now this is looking like a better height. It's more in line with the way the old TV was, except. What I can do here is I can put some felt bottoms on the top of the pipe going to the stand so that the center channel is not only resting on the top shelf, it's also resting against the pipe as well for extra support. We'll just add or remove felt bottoms <laughs> depending on what works the best. 
I would like to tilt my center channel a little bit downwards though, so if it's jamming itself into this right here, that's not a problem. Yeah, here we go. This brings back the old school setup where you put the time underneath the computer and stuff. Or we can move this over here, get the tools out of the way, get the other stuff out of the way, and just uh, get some space on the desk because now we can actually put stuff under the monitor. So there's no more center, whatever you want to call it with this thing. And it's definitely got more options available for helping to keep things clean or, you know, support for peripherals or something. If you want to get a joystick over here and play like Battlefield again and have a flight stick for when I jump in the planes, stuff along those lines. The center channel will actually fit on top and now some of that weight is being pushed into the pipe, not into the monitor. So that's a little, that takes some of the pressure off of whatever that top shelf is on top of. Then we got screen two over there. Unfortunately, the second Samsung screen that I use is not VESA compliant for mounts like that. So this is gonna have to go back to the project area and I'll have to see, let me go see if the on monitor has uh, screw holes for bolting it onto something. Name brand Samsung doesn't support custom mounts. Cheap Walmart piece of junk does support custom mounts. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Epic fear. So it might look kind of stupid that I still have the default feet on the screen at this point. And it does look kind of stupid. But it has a little bit of practicality in the midst of all the stupidity. So first off, if I want to adjust the height on this thing and maybe put the screen up in the air or whatever it is, I can put the TV just on the desk in front of everything and then just snap it back in. Don't have to worry about laying it flat somewhere or trying not to scratch the screen because it actually will stand vertically. What would be really cool is if these could turn so that when it was up in the air like this, they could be flush and then just turn them out when you have to stand them up. But I guess Samsung didn't go with that for their default thing. One of the other fun things about having the feet still on the TV when it's up in the air like this is that if you need to turn the TV, you have something convenient to grab onto and you don't have to reach as far to grab the entire screen. So you just grab the two feet and then just turn it a little bit and that's that. You don't have to lean forward as much. I did take the clock off the top and center the center, center channel on the top shelf though because I noticed this thing starting to yaw a bit off to the side when the weight was uneven. So we gotta keep the weight balanced when using stuff like this. But, I mean, I spent years going all the way back to college having an alarm clock in the lower right under my screen. And if I wanna make sure that it doesn't fall onto it, if say this whole thing were to come undone, I can just put this way in the back over at the edge of the desk, because I have access to that now. And I don't have some gigantic, like, mushroom foundation, whatever you wanna call it, stand right in the middle of everything. Oh, time to eat? Okay, let me just scroll the keyboard out of the way. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, back to gaming. This is definitely an upgrade. <laughs> and it gives me the hardware to have a custom mount if I upgrade to 4K, which will require me to squeeze in a 43-inch TV to this. But we're not quite there yet with the setup. Now that's what I'm talking about right here. Good to go. And this gives me a blueprint for what I want to do when I upgrade to a 43-inch 4K TV whenever I happen to decide to do that. So yeah, it looks like the next step we need to do is look at speaker stands and an adjustable arm for a second monitor in order to get this all cleaned up over here. We can't use the second Samsung for that because there's no mount support, but we can bring over the Walmart monitor, which has a really good picture, by the way, despite being a Walmart special, and just hook everything up that way and get everything good to go then we can get the speakers off the desk. Except maybe the center channel. I think the center channel will be fine perching on top of my main display. Until we gotta figure out what to do about it when we get a 43-incher. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a 43-incher in order to go 4K. So this is a 40-inch right now. It's gonna get a little bit bigger, but it's gonna be just a hair too big for this to work. This panel by itself is actually bigger than the old panel when you fact, even with the bezels factored in, that's why there's overlap between monitor one and monitor two. But we are good to go on all of this. Ah, till next time. This is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>